So, well, the limit is, imagine, uh, okay, so they're using a diffraction grating and not the double slit apparatus. So with a, with a diffraction grating, you're going to see uh, these are not necessarily going to be evenly spaced. But the limit is, of course, when, when theta becomes so large that it is, in fact, 90 degrees or just less than 90 degrees. You're not going to see any reinforcement. In fact, this uh, this board would have to be infinitely long if you got to 89.9999 degrees, and whatever it may be, whatever it may be. So, uh, so we'll just say that the limit is where sine theta equals one, or sine of 90 degrees. Have a go at that. Diffraction grading is ruled with four. 1,500 lines per centimetre. I'll just remind you how you measure what D is from that. Some people will have forgotten. It's 1 on 4,500, 4,500 centimetres, which equals 2.22 by 10 to the minus 6 metres. I've done two conversions there. I've calculated this and I've also changed it to meters. Just beware, be wary of that. Lambda equals 589 nanometers. Maximum number of orders of reinforcement that can be seen through the grading. Have a go, please. What we've got here is sine theta, of course. We'll put our formula in first. Sine theta, d sine theta equals m lambda. d sine theta equals m lambda. Sine of theta equals m lambda on d. We have all of this information. Uh, m maximum number of orders but well, we don't know what that's going to be this is some unknown so we'll just leave that as m actually i'll put that wavelength in first 589 by 10 to the minus 9 over d 2.22 times 10 to the minus 6 m and that's not meters that's our order Uh, and I'll just I'll bring it over here. Go this way this time so that we stay on this same page. Uh, I've got a value for sine theta is equal to 0.265 m. Now. So that's sine of theta. And we want sine of theta to be less than or equal to 1, where theta is 90 degrees. So from that, 0 0.265, or actually, a student came up with a better way. We just divide 1 by 0.265 and we get so you calculated that, Travis. Thank you. Three point seven seven. So what's the maximum number of orders on one side that you can see from that? We're not, we're not quite making four. Okay, so maximum three orders. How many bands do we see in that spectrum? Spectra. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So 
Paul says seven. So maximum number of reinforcement. Lines is seven. Sorry about the mess there. To show that second and third order spectra of white light over at lap. What are they talking about there? If you put white light through a diffraction grating, we're going to see something like this, you'll remember. Uh, here it is. Here's the first order spectrum. So we'll see all the colours of the rainbow. Second order spectrum all of the colours of the rainbow and third order spectrum. And, and what this is showing here is that this third order overlaps the second order spectra just a little bit. So I'll take, take that picture. Just to remind us what we're talking about here. Um... Take the wavelength limits of white light to be 400 nanometers for violet and 750 nanometers for red and refer to the diagram 10.2.3. So what, what do we need to show around here with some mathematics? Yes. Yep, for this guy, yep. Yes, and so, and and you can see that they they don't overlap entirely. So, what will we look at for lambda in the second order spectrum? Yeah, the, not that they're the same. Yeah, we could look for the same wavelengths if we wanted to, and therefore we could deduce an overlapping. But if we just show that the red is at a larger angle than the violet of the third order spectrum, sorry, the red of the second order spectrum. It's at a larger angle than the violet of the third order spectrum, then we've proved it. And that's how they do it in the text. Um, have a go at that, please. Let's have a look at what we're talking about again here. If I draw in those colours, it's easier to see. Uh, violet. The violet line. And if I can show that the red line the red of the second order spectrum is at a larger angle than I'm there. I've, I've proved it, that they do overlap. That the second and third order spectra overlap. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, we don't know the we don't know D for the diffraction grading, but that we're using the same diffraction grading. Start with our formula. D sine theta equals m lambda, of course. Sine of theta m lambda on D. Uh, this is so for the second order reinforcement for red. Sine theta equals 2 for M, 
times lambda, 750 nanometers over D. which equals 1,500 by 10 to the minus 9 on D. And for, for the third order, reinforcement, For violet, sine theta equals three times four hundred nanometers on D. Which equals twelve hundred by ten to the minus nine on D, which angle is larger? There it shows here, this, this number here is going to be bigger for theta, isn't it, than this number. So this one, this will give a larger value for theta the second order red occurs at a greater angle, greater angle than the third order. Violet. So these two spectral orders overlap Who was capable of doing that, working out that last problem? Good. That's good. Some people in the class are good. If you could sort out, if you could answer that last question, you'll probably be pretty good at this question too. Oh. Oh no. If I go keep going back. Here we go. Sorry about that. Calculation of the angular spread of a spectrum. So remember I should move this over, I suppose. Remember that uh, this diagram, this 10.2.3, shows that as we, as we go to different order of spectrums, or we, we increase the number of or, the order of spectrum, the spectra, the angular spread gets larger. Okay. Uh, white light is viewed through a diffraction grating rule with 4,000 lines per centimetre. Show that the angular spread of the second order spectrum is greater than that of the first order spectrum. How would you do that? Yep. 
Yes. Find the red and violet angles for both of them and that's right. Do a simple calculation and you've got it. That's it. Okay, so for the first order spectrum, we'll do the first order first. Uh, theta for violet. Theta sub violet is equal to sine minus 1, m which is 1, lambda which is 400 10 to the minus 9 metres all over d which is 2.5 to the minus 6. Uh, we got a value of 9.2 degrees for theta. Uh, theta in the red region for the first order spectrum. Sine of minus 1, 750 by 10 to the minus 9 metres over 2.5 by 10 to the minus 6. Which equals 17.5 degrees. And to find the angular spread, then we, of course, just take those away. So 17.5 minus 9.2 degrees is equal to 8.3 degrees. Angular spread. Let's go to the... Second order spectrum. Oh, hang on. Yep. Hang on. Second order spectrum, much like the first. The violet line. Sign minus one. 2 times 400 to the minus 9. A student said in the last class, can you just multiply everything by 2? Apparently not. If you're taking the sine of it, inverse sine, yeah, that's right. 2.5. Um, my intuition says that that's not possible. And the math says that it's not possible either, but I can't remember why. Uh, we get 18.7, which is not 2 times 9.2, quite, degrees. Two times 750 nanometers. Over our D. Thirty six point nine degrees. Thirty six point nine minus eighteen point seven. Eighteen point two degrees angular spread. This number here and this number here are different and it, yeah, it shows that um, in fact, whoops, that number and that number, the angular spread for the second order spectrum is larger. For the second order spectrum, 
is larger. If you make it flash, it puts me off. Imagine the surface of the wall looks something like this. Okay, it's 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 bumpy at best. When we get down to the order of wavelengths of light, of visible light, and I shine a laser, which is what sort of light? Monochromatic and coherent, so it has a constant phase relationship, or each of the rays that that uh, the laser is producing have a constant phase relationship between them. And yet, um, and, and you know, Hazik, would you stop that, please? And you know uh, that it's bouncing off in all directions, isn't it? How do we know that it's bouncing off in all directions, this laser, for instance? If, we, if we're looking at a, a diagram of what we see in front of us, that, that board. Because what? Not because of the speckles. Yeah, because every one of us can see it. So it's reflected off in all directions, okay? And so <clears throat> that's exactly what I wanted to say. So I'll just choose one direction, not the band, just one direction where... <laughs> what can you say, looking at, looking close, closely at this surface here, about this line of light compared to this line of light? about its path, the path that it has to take. Imagine that's the surface across there. Okay. This is a bit of paint. And this is my eye here. Can you see that the path difference between those two bits of light is, is different? And if it's, if it's out by, if this distance here, this very small distance, this very small distance is greater than lambda on four. Not, not a wavelength, but half a wavelength phase difference to what it had before. So, because imagine it's got to go down lambda on four, it's got to come back up lambda on four, that's lambda on two. These two beams of light, whatever phase difference they had before, they now have lambda on two phase difference. And we start to get both constructive and destructive interference effects because of the surface here. We call this laser, laser I'm putting in capitals, speckle. Laser in capitals because it's an acronym, of course, light amplification by stimulated emission radiation. We'll learn about those later. So the laser, the light, travels down lambda on four, then up lambda on four, and so travels an extra half a wavelength. adjacent beams say it's phase It's 
phase relationship will be lambda on two out from its original value. We see speckle or constructive and destructive interference. 